For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Join us as the faithful of the Archdiocese of Newark continue our celebrations of Holy Week tonight with Holy Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Live streamed from Newark, New Jersey at the Cathedral Basilica of the Sacred Heart. We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, porque en Él tenemos la salvación, la vida y la resurrección, y por Él hemos sido salvados y redimidos, through whom we are saved and delivered. Entering into the celebration of the sacred mysteries of our Passover, let us sing, cantemos, lift high the cross, alzad la cruz, in la página 4 del folleto, on page 4 of the worship booklet.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to this celebration of the evening Mass of the Lord's Supper. We gather in extraordinary circumstances, and it is my pleasure to greet you here from here, the Cathedral Basilica of the Sacred Heart, the Mother Church of the Archdiocese of, of Newark, New Jersey. We pray that our celebration together will draw us closer to our Lord as the, on the first moment of the Sacred Tree to One. Hermanos y hermanas muy queridos en Cristo, me da mucho gusto darles la bienvenida más calorosa a esta celebración virtual con ustedes, la familia de Cristo, en esta noche en que se celebra el primer momento del Sagrado Triduo, la Cena del Señor. Pidamos que esta celebración nos una con los, los enlaces de amor con Cristo y con su cuerpo, la Iglesia. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a, home la a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. For all the good he has done for me, 
the cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion, es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. Mucho le cuesta al Señor la muerte de sus fieles. Señor, yo soy tu siervo, hijo de tu esclava. Rompiste mis cadenas. Our blessing cup is a communion. Es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. Te ofreceré un sacrificio de alabanza, invocando tu nombre, Señor. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion, es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos, yo recibí del Señor mismo lo que a mi vez le he enseñado, que el Señor Jesús, la noche en que fue entregado, tomó el pan. Y después de dar gracias, lo partió diciendo, Esto es mi cuerpo, que es entregado por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. De la misma manera, tomando la copa después de haber cenado, dijo, Esta copa es la nueva alianza en mi sangre, Siempre que beban de ella, háganlo en memoria mía. Así pues, cada vez que comen de este pan y beben de la copa, están anunciando la muerte del Señor hasta que venga. Palabra de Dios
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all, for he knew who who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined that table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that I have done to you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. In my first years as a priest, I would occasionally preach retreats at a small diocesan center across the border in Canada from Detroit, a little town called Oxley, Ontario, a beautiful place on the northern shores of Lake Erie. The resident priest at this retreat center was ordained the year I was born. And by the time I met him, he was a usually lovable curmudgeon that was incredibly popular with young people. The retreat house was booked most of the year with days of recollection, with CYO retreats, with moments of reflection for high school seniors who were about to graduate. And in fact, his account of what happened on one of those high school retreats has given me a lasting, indelible insight into the mystery that we celebrate tonight. The students this particular day came across the border from Detroit. They were high school seniors of a school that had recently been formed by the merger of two other schools. And interestingly enough, one school was predominantly African American. The other was predominantly white. And Father Adrian told me that throughout the day he could sense a tension, sort of a low voltage current that was running through the group, but he couldn't understand what was happening until the very end. The day of recollection was to close with the celebration of the Eucharist. 
They were going to begin in a parlor next to the chapel, where in a less formal session setting, they could listen to the Word of God, and then the priest and students would have a dialogue homily, discussing what that word meant as they're approaching a milestone in their lives. And before they went to the chapel to celebrate the Eucharist, Father Adrian invited the group to offer petitions in the prayer of the faithful. And the first voice to perk up was from this lovely young white girl who prayed sincerely that we may always be as united as we are at this moment. And at that point, the African-American students left. And the girl turned to the priest with angry tears in her eyes, and she said, let them go. We don't need them. And so I asked Father Adrian over my bologna sandwich, what did you do? And he said, I was quiet for a moment and prayed. And then I took off my stole. And I said to the young people who remained, why don't you all go back to your rooms and wait for the school bus to come and pick you up? Because I don't think we can celebrate the Eucharist today. The story didn't end there. A week or two later on a Friday night, Father was beginning a retreat for adults. And in the middle of the opening conference, he noticed in the back of the room some young people who came in and were standing against the back wall, three young fellows. And he, as he went back to greet them after the conference, he recognized them. These were three of the group that walked out. And one of them, who I guess had been elected the spokesman, said to Father Adrian, Father, we came for two reasons. First, we wanted to apologize for what happened. There was some stuff going on among us, and we should have solved it in a better way. But secondly, we're not really sorry that it happened because we didn't understand what the Eucharist really was until we couldn't celebrate it. The Apostle Paul would understand what went on in that parlor and Father Adrian's dilemma. We read this evening from the 11th chapter of his first letter to the Corinthians, that beautiful account of what Jesus did the night before he died, how he took bread and broke it and said the blessing and said, this is my body for you. Do this in memory of me. And how at the end of the supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is the covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, remember me. This is the oldest account, brothers and sisters, that we have of the institution of the Eucharist. What we do in memory of Jesus. But if you read the whole letter to the first Corinthians. Paul was pleading, cajoling, and sometimes downright criticizing the divisions in the community at Corinth. How people had divided into factions. And these factions, in fact, were disfiguring their celebration of the Eucharist. And they had forgot what Paul said at the end of the reading we heard tonight. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. If we read a little bit earlier in the 11th chapter, Paul describes what he heard is going on when the Corinthians gathered to pray. He said, when you meet in one place then, 
it's not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each person goes ahead with his own supper, and one goes hungry while the other gets drunk. Paul reminds the Corinthians to receive the body of Christ is to recognize that one is also part of the body of Christ and renews each time we do what Jesus did, a commitment to act and live and, yes, die as Jesus did. Of the four Gospels, John's account of what happened the night before Jesus died is the only one that does not speak of the bread and the cup and Jesus' words over them. Instead, he describes Jesus doing something else, washing the feet of his disciples. Jesus was revealing God to his disciples to us what God is really like. And this gesture of Jesus has a very telling punchline, teaching us of an absolutely necessary condition to celebrate the Eucharist. Jesus says, I have given you a model to follow so that just as I have done for you, you also should do. Do you suppose that the Eucharistic fast that has been imposed on us by a pandemic will teach us anything? Anything that might help us better understand the Lord Jesus' gift to us as a result of the weeks that we've not been able to gather personally around the table of the Lord's sacrament. I believe that this pandemia and this extraordinary circumstances can offer two insights that may help us respond to the Lord's question to his disciples tonight. Do you understand what I have done for you? We have seen how the coronavirus respects no barriers no social, national, economic divisions. Though some of us are more vulnerable, all are potential victims, all are potential carriers. We are connected as potential targets, but we are together the solution to this terrible virus because it will be defeated only if we remain united in our common action. And secondly, the Eucharist, the Eucharist is the source of our unity with Christ and with each other. Receiving it is not simply an act of union with the living God, but it's a commitment to work for unity. One of the earliest Eucharistic prayers, only a hundred years or so after the death and resurrection of Christ, prayed like this. As this broken bread was once scattered over the hills as grain, so after being together became one. So may your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The first Eucharistic lesson of the pandemic is the need for unity. And we embrace the Eucharist as the source and commitment for unity in the church. The second Eucharistic lesson of these days is in how to wash feet. Jesus in saying, I, I've given you a model, wasn't speaking necessarily of a hygienic practice, as important as those are today. He was speaking about what he was going to do the next day. 
how his love would lead him to the cross for the sake of his sisters and brothers. And during the words that will follow in John's gospel, that night before he died, he will talk about the greatest love. And no, it's not loving ourselves. Jesus says the greatest love is to lay down your life for your friend. That's what the foot washing prepares us for. That's what it shows us on the way. And think of nurses, doctors, health professionals. Think of first responders, the, the firemen, the police officers, the ambulance drivers. Think of all those anonymous people who perform spontaneous acts of charity for their neighbors, whether it's a phone call, an offer to go shopping, some way to help them bridge the terrible isolation that we're all experiencing. Those are Eucharistic actions. That is a result for us who are Catholic Christians of receiving the body of Christ because we act as Jesus acted. And so, dear brothers and sisters, at this time when we're so conscious of our hunger for the Eucharist, let's take time to think about what we can learn from what Jesus did the night before he died and celebrate and proclaim his saving death until he comes again. Muy queridos hermanos y hermanas en Cristo, en esta noche en la que recordamos la institución del don precioso de la Santa Eucaristía, me parece que las circunstancias que nos rodean, todo el sufrimiento, y el dolor de esta pandemia podría en su modo enseñarnos sobre la Eucaristía, el misterio que celebramos en esta noche. Primeramente, la Eucaristía, el cuerpo y la sangre de Cristo es la fuente de nuestra unidad y a la vez un compromiso a hacer y luchar para la unidad de nuestra comunidad católica cristiana y la unidad finalmente de toda la raza humana. El segundo, Cristo lavó los pies de los apóstoles abrazándoles en un amor incondicional, humilde, no importante sus debilidades y fragilidades, necios, ignorantes, cobardes, no importa, los abraza Jesús. Me parece que este, en esta pandemia, Vemos el testimonio de tantas mujeres y hombres que se sacrifican siguiendo el ejemplo de Jesús, dando sus vidas a favor de sus amigos, sus hermanos y hermanas. Y nosotros que sufrimos ahora un ayuno muy, muy fuerte del cuerpo y sangre de Cristo, Vamos a volver un día a comulgar, Dios mediante. Queremos desde ahora vivir de manera eucarística, luchando para la unidad de todos y a la vez dando nosotros mismos un autodón de ser para que vivan los demás.
In this time of the Lord's Passion, when Christ offered prayers and supplications to his Father with loud cries and tears, let us humbly beseech God that in answer to his Son's reverent submission, he may in mercy hear our prayers also. For the Church, the household of faith redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, may be celebrated, celebrate this freedom in communion with Pope Francis and Joseph, our Bishop, as a festival of deliverance and new life. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, que las naciones del mundo entero renueven su compromiso por la paz y la justicia. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Escúchanos, Señor. For those ordained to preside at the altar of Christ's sacrifice and supper, may they fulfill by lives of service the love they celebrate in this mystery. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Escúchanos, Señor. Para que las comunidades encuentren la manera de dialogar desacuerdos con honestidad y respeto mutuo. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Escúchanos, Señor. For all catechumens who still wait the grace of initiation, may this Easter fill their hearts with longing for the waters of baptism, the seal of the Spirit, and the taste of the Eucharist. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those affected by the pandemic, the sick and the suffering, the anxious and the fearful, and those who have lost loved ones, may they see their sufferings and struggles lifted up and redeemed by the cross of Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Escúchanos, Señor. Por todos los profesionales de la salud y personal de servicio, por los que ejercen labores y profesiones para suplir necesidades esenciales de la comunidad, para que sean protegidos, amparados y sientan nuestra gratitud. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Escuchanos, Señor. For those who have departed this world to go to the Father, may they come to share fully in Christ's Paschal victory. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We now add our own intentions in silence. Presentemos nuestras intenciones personales en silencio. For those intentions which we speak only in our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Escúchanos, Señor. Atiende, Señor, a las súplicas de tu pueblo, para que lo que no se atreve a esperar por sus propios méritos, lo alcance por la pasión de tu Hijo, que contigo vive a reina por los siglos de los siglos.
contoured harp. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We should always accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord of God, our hosts, To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, 
to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and my assistant bishops, and all who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember your Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clemus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, his almighty, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come on Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, 
to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through part this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, grant, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Fieles a la recomendación del Salvador y siguiendo su divina enseñanza, nos atrevemos a decir, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en la tentación y líbranos del mal. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor. Concede la paz en nuestros días para que, ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres del pecado y protegidos de toda perturbación mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles y la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia, y conforme a tu palabra, concédele la paz y la unidad, tú que vives en reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amen. The peace of the Lord, la paz de Jesús, esté siempre con ustedes. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Este es el Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo. Dichosos los invitados a la cena del Señor. Señor, yo no soy digno de que entres en mi casa, pero una palabra tuya bastará para sanarme. Please join in our communion hymn. This is my body. This body will be given for you. Este es mi cuerpo. En la página 10 del folleto de mano. On page 10 of the worship booklet. This body will be given for you. Concédenos, Dios Todopoderoso, que así como somos alimentados en esta vida con la cena pascual de tu Hijo, así también merezcamos ser saciados en el banquete eterno por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. El Señor esté con ustedes. Y con tu espíritu. Dios Todopoderoso los bendiga, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo. Let us join together singing, Stay With Me, as on page 10 of the worship booklet. Stay. 